Like all the new cast members introduced in 1986's The Transformers the Movie, the character of the consummate Autobot soldier Ultra Magnus was created for the film, with the intention that a toy would be made based on designs created by artist Floro Deary. This was the reverse of how Transformers characters normally came into being at the time, since the toy usually came first, and a change in plans soon led things to swing back in that direction when it was decided that, rather than receive an original design, Magnus would be physically represented by one of the last remaining figures from the Japanese Diaclone toy line that Hasbro had not yet imported to become part of the Transformers series, Powered Convoy. The original design Deary had begun for Magnus was filed away, and eventually reworked for the Season 2 episode War Dawn to become Orion Pax, the young version of Optimus Prime. The Ultra Magnus toy featured the same cab robot as Optimus Prime's, but rather than a tractor trailer, came with a car carrier that transformed into a huge suit of armour for the smaller figure. But the new character model Deary created based on the toy ignored this feature, and the film, and all other classic media, depicted Magnus's armoured appearance as his one and only robot form. The change from original design to powered convoy evidently came late enough in production that when an early promotional trailer for the film was assembled, the toy's new red, white, and blue colour scheme hadn't yet been decided upon, since Magnus appeared in the trailer in powered convoy colours. Magnus actually made his global debut not in the film itself, but in the Japanese exclusive direct-to-video special, Scramble City, a few months before the film's US release. Set between the second season of the cartoon and the movie, Scramble City and its tie-in manga explained how Ultra Magnus, who the manga said Optimus Prime treated like a brother, arrived on Earth with an assortment of advanced technologies which were used to begin creating an Autobot city on the planet. It was in the role of commander of this city that Western audiences met Magnus when the Transformers the movie arrived on screens, with celebrity guest performer Robert Stack providing his voice. The straight-laced Magnus preferred taking orders to giving them, but found the mantle of leadership thrust upon him when Optimus Prime died in battle and bequeathed the Autobot Matrix of leadership to him. Magnus gave it his all, even willing to sacrifice himself to protect his comrades, but it wasn't his destiny. The Matrix instead chose the young Autobot Hot Rod to lead, transforming him into Rodimus Prime. In the subsequent third season of the cartoon, in which series regular Jack Angel took over the role, Magnus left his city commander duties behind to serve as Rodimus Prime's second-in-command and advisor, helping the inexperienced young leader deal with the struggles of his new position. Magnus also enjoyed several spotlight adventures of his own during the season, including a team-up with Cyclonus to escape a Quintesson who'd captured them for study, and having his mind briefly transferred into a synthetic human form. Following the end of the American cartoon, Magnus continued to appear in the Japanese-exclusive sequel series, The Headmasters, now back in his old job as commander of Autobot City. In this show, Magnus gained a new opposite number in Six Shot, commander of the Decepticons' Earth operations, and when the pair met in solo combat, Magnus perished at Six Shot's hands. His body was buried at sea, but he would eventually be restored to life decades later in new manga stories published in the 21st century. Ultra Magnus did not appear in the Marvel comic book published in the US, but to tie in with the release of the movie, he was introduced into the UK series, in which he was a mighty warrior created on modern-day Cybertron to help the Autobot Commando unit The Wreckers on an important mission. But when word reached Cybertron from Earth that Optimus Prime had mysteriously disappeared, Magnus was instead forced to travel to the planet to investigate. Optimus's disappearance turned out to be the work of the time-travelling Decepticon Galvatron, who had come to 1986 from 20 years in the future to escape the shackles of his creator, Unicron. Magnus took him on one-on-one -on -one in what would be remembered as one of the most celebrated battles in the comic's history, but was ultimately unable to defeat the incredibly powerful Decepticon. This began a series of confrontations between the two that ran over the course of the next few years of the comic, but unfortunately a format change to the series meant the pair never settled the feud between them. Over 20 years later, though, IDW publishing sequel comic, Regeneration 1, gave Magnus the final showdown with Galvatron the original series had failed to deliver. After setting out the Beast era, Ultra Magnus returned to TV screens in 2001, when a new incarnation of the character appeared in the Robots in Disguise anime. Where the Scramble City manga had only suggested a figurative sibling relationship, this series depicted Ultra Magnus as Optimus Prime's brother, who, in a straight inversion of the classic character, coveted leadership and was furious that Optimus Prime had been chosen for the role over him. He attempted to steal Optimus's Matrix for himself, only to discover that the brothers could share its power 
by merging into the mighty Omega Prime. Presumably at least partially inspired by robots in disguise, Dreamwave Productions went on to depict the original Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus as brothers in their short-lived Generation 1 comics in the early 2000s. In this continuity, Magnus was leader of the Wreckers, and Cybertron's chief security enforcer, serving under Shockwave after the Decepticon brought peace to the planet. Inevitably, of course, Shockwave betrayed and blasted him, leading Magnus to shed his damaged armor and reveal that inside, he was a white duplicate of his brother, the shared cab robot from their original toys appearing in fiction for the first time. This sibling connection tied into an old fandom theory. Just as War Dawn had shown Orion Pax being rebuilt as Optimus Prime, fans had always enjoyed speculating that maybe Ultra Magnus might have been rebuilt from Orion's best friend, Dion. Now, of course, it had never been the intention of the actual episode and was always just something fans cooked up, but both Robots in Disguise and Dreamwave used the familial link between the characters to make teasing references to this possible shared origin. Even stories from the Transformers Collectors Club a decade later continued to play the game, suggesting that Magnus was rebuilt from either Dion or a familiar-looking Autobot officer named Magnum. The brotherly connection was dropped for Magnus's next major appearance, in IDW Publishing's comic books beginning in 2006. But the new stories did follow in the footsteps of Dreamwave by depicting him as a law enforcer. But IDW's Magnus ratcheted the original straight-laced character up to 11. Now, he was the strict, humorless, bureaucratic enforcer of the Tyrist Accord, travelling the galaxy to ensure the Transformers were abiding by the interplanetary code of conduct during their war. After the war ended, Magnus joined the crew of the starship Lost Light, but when he was seriously injured by the rogue Decepticon Overlord, an incredible secret was revealed. Unbeknownst to almost everyone, inside his armor, in a brand new spin on the classic inner robot idea, Magnus was a tiny little Autobot named Minimus Ambus, who turned out to be only the latest in a line of robots who had held the Ultra Magnus identity following the death of the original during the war. While his character was flourishing in comic books, Ultra Magnus was doing the same on toy store shelves, with many new action figures bearing his name seeing release. Mm, but there was a catch. They were all recolored versions of other pre-existing toys. Dreamwave's use of the white cab robot ushered in a deluge of Optimus Prime toys recolored in white and re-released as Ultra Magnus, a practice that's still going on today. And even the Unicron Trilogy's new incarnation of Magnus, introduced in 2004's Transformers Energon, was a recolor of the Transformers Armada character, Overload. Although he, at least, had taken some visual inspiration from the original Magnus in the first place. These recolored Magnuses didn't appear in any major media, but some of them did see a little action in stories published through the Transformers Collectors Club, including a battle between our Magnus and his evil Mirror Universe counterpart, brother of his own world's evil Optimus Prime. Eventually, brand new Ultra Magnus designs did start appearing, beginning in 2008 with Transformers Animated. This Magnus, in another inversion of his traditional characterization, was not Optimus Prime's subordinate or brother, but rather the supreme commander of all Autobots and ruler of Cybertron. Animated Ultra Magnus, voiced by actor Jeff Bennett doing a straight-up impression of Robert Stack, wielded the weather-controlling Magnus Hammer as a symbol of his leadership, but its power wasn't enough to save him from the Decepticon undercover agent Shockwave, who gravely wounded him. Animated unfortunately ended before Ultra Magnus's fate could be resolved, but hammers have since become a trademark weapon for Magnus, wielded by multiple other incarnations of the character, and packaged as accessories with several toys. One such hammer wielder was the aligned incarnation of Ultra Magnus, the personally trained second-in-command of Optimus Prime, who led the Autobot fight on Cybertron after Optimus and Megatron's forces left the planet. After a handful of appearances in video games, novels, and comics, Magnus joined the cast of the Transformers Prime cartoon in its third season, which drew heavily on the character's personality from IDW's comics. He was an officious, by-the-book soldier who, as in Dreamwave, served as leader of the Wreckers, but only to bring discipline to the unruly unit. His militaristic command style caused friction with Optimus Prime's team, especially former Wrecker Wheeljack, but Magnus softened as he came to understand that Team Prime viewed each other as family, rather than soldiers. Magnus took the massive hammer that was the Forge of Solus Prime as his personal weapon, and he was still wielding it when he guest starred in the tie-in comic book for the 2015 sequel series, Robots in Disguise. 
Where and in what form Ultra Magnus will next appear, we can't say. But it's not likely to be too long before we find out. Just please, ease off on the White Optimus Primes. We can't deal with those now. And those are the basics on Ultra Magnus. Soldier, sibling, supreme commander, which is your favourite? Have your say in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more.